Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today I'm so excited to reveal my epic kitchen makeover to you. So some of you have actually already noticed, but this apartment used to belong to our friends Ed and Noel. And if you guys are early subscribers, you know that I made over this very kitchen for under a hundred dollars. It was like one of the first videos on my channel. So if you're on a super tight budget, go watch that video. I'll link it up here. I used peel and stick countertops. A lot of people in the comments were like, that doesn't last. That won't hold up, but I can, tell you guys from experience that they were completely fine up until I did this makeover. Highly recommend the vinyl peel and stick. So the thing about a kitchen makeover is that you can do small things like I did to Etta Noel's, but then sometimes people wanna renovate their kitchens. So whether you own your kitchen or you plan to stay in your rental long-term like I do. Fun fact, in Canada, the average kitchen renovation costs 25 to $50,000. So that's obviously like, you know, knocking down walls, um, adding all new appliances. But this video is more like if you wanna do a mini kitchen reno. And the things that you should spend money on if you want to give your space more of a facelift than just vinyl peel and stick contact paper. Full disclosure guys, before we get into this video, there are some super renter friendly changes that I've made to this kitchen, but they're also more kind of renovation type aspects to it. I asked my landlord if I could make these changes. I gave her a list of all the things I was going to include in this space. So please do not go into your rental kitchen and start knocking down cabinets or like changing the countertops without asking because that could get you in trouble. My landlord totally now realizes like, oh, I have a YouTuber in my space and she is going to give me a kitchen upgrade and a bathroom upgrade, and a living room upgrade. So it's a win-win for both of us, but obviously ask your landlord before you make these changes. Okay, well let's get started. If you're new here, I recently moved on to the top floor of an old Victorian house with my two cats, Harriet and Marty, and my partner, Andrew. Follow me in this series where I transform this entire apartment room to room, giving you on budget and renter-friendly solutions. You're watching my rental reno. The first thing I did was have a contractor come over and do the things that I could have maybe done myself, but I didn't want to risk doing myself. Because this kitchen is so small, it only took about three hours, so his contractor fee was not that expensive. So it was worth it for me to bring someone in and do all of that work that I'm not comfortable doing myself. Now, I think this is a really good tip. I know you guys have probably heard about Butcher Block. It's like, you know, one of the cheaper counter alternatives. Wood and laminate are like the cheapest countertop options. But I wanted to kind of take it a step further, make it a little bit different. So I actually found this beautiful herringbone wood. So it kind of puts a spin on your traditional like Butcher Block and makes it, in my opinion, look a lot more stylish. I've linked all the products down down below by the way so if you guys want to get the look in your own kitchen next up this beautiful farmhouse sink from ikea i've wanted a farmhouse sink for so long the amount of room the sink now gives us to do dishes is life-changing i was gonna say that's being dramatic but no actually it's changed our like dishes game a lot we also took out like all of these boxes that were under the cabinets they were holding these like old electrical things that didn't even work it was like you know a production. So I am really glad that I had a contractor come in. I wouldn't have been comfortable doing it on my own. We stripped down this back vinyl paneling. It was, I don't know what it was. It was this weird backslash that was like shiny. We took it down to the drywall and then this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful faucet from Delta Faucet. It's so gorgeous, it's gold. And I just think it's such a game changer in the space. It elevates this kitchen, it makes it look so chic. If you guys are planning like a mini kitchen refresh, I would highly recommend getting a new sink, getting a new countertop. Those two things alone will drastically change your kitchen. So the next step is I'm going to fill in all of these cabinet holes because I wanna change the hardware and I can't find anything that fits um, these holes and I want something really specific so I'm going to fill in um, the holes with putty so I've done this here this was all uneven I've just filled it with putty and then I'm gonna sand it down before I paint so a lot of people have actually asked me how do you fill a hole um, and this is great this is a great tip to learn for when you rent and you put holes in the walls and when you leave you want to cover them up because you weren't supposed to hang anything so basically what you need is a putty knife um, I've used the cheap kind of plastic ones, but invest in a good one because it really does make all the difference. 
and then some spackling. There's so many different kinds of spackling. Um, I'm using this one. The first thing you want to do though is sand the area down. So I'm just going to sand this down. And then you want to take, Marty, you want to take some putty in your knife, on your knife like this. And then you just want to like that and fill the hole. You don't want too much and you want to scrape it off. Just like that. So you might have to come back and do a couple coats. But you want to just get as much of it off around it as you can. And then once it dries, this one's pink, but it'll dry white. Um, you can sand it down a bit so it's all even and then start painting. So I did this one a while ago and you can tell it's already drying. So I'm gonna sand it down and I'll show you guys that. But for now, I'm just gonna keep doing that to all of the cabinets before I start painting. Like just changing this off-white cabinet system to all bright white. This color is linked down below. It's from Benjamin Moore. Made this kitchen feel so much more fresh, so light, so airy. I don't know if you guys can see, but like what a difference. If you guys have old tired cabinets, just give them a coat of paint. I was actually really worried about painting cabinets. I'm not a super fan of Painting. It took me maybe two hours to do this whole kitchen and I'm just so happy with how it turned out. What a difference. Next up, I actually spray painted my fridge door handle. I mentioned this in my previous video, easy rental upgrades. I think this is just such a simple way to give your appliances a little bit of new life. This one was yellowing, it was not cute. So a quick coat of spray paint has totally transformed this fridge. My dream is like a mint green um, snack fridge, but one can dream. Let me know in the comments down below what your dream fridge color is. I would really love to know. So for the backsplash, I actually went back and forth with this a lot because on one hand I was like, maybe I should just subway tile it white. It is a rental. Then I was like, but I'm here and I really want a pink kitchen. How am I gonna make this work? So then I thought, I'm gonna use pink peel and stick tiles. These were so easy to install, that is not an exaggeration. I would say like it took maybe 20 minutes to backsplash this entire back of my kitchen. It was so easy, they're so secure. In order to take them off, you need a hair dryer, so a little bit of heat, and then you pry them off. These tiles are from Smart Tiles, again, linked below. I would highly, highly recommend them. I actually only did one side. You know, it's a rental. I didn't wanna put even more money into these tiles, and I think an accent backsplash wall is perfectly fine. I actually tiled behind my refrigerator. I didn't tile the whole thing, just where you literally see the tile. And I just feel like this finishes off the space and makes it look really professional and it really does give that feel and look of real backsplash ceramic tile. The next change is something I talk about a lot and it's changing out your knobs. This is like the simplest way to transform your kitchen cabinets. You guys know I love using gold Amazon knobs. I use them in like every video. They are linked down below, but I used some hexagon knobs instead. They're gold, they're a little bit heavier. I loved the shape of them. I think it adds something to this all white cabinet system thing going on here. They're kind of a piece of art, but they're also knobs, obviously. If you are switching out your knobs in a rental, make sure you keep the old ones, so then you can switch them out when you leave and you can bring your new knobs to your new kitchen. And then on the drawers, I got these three beautiful pulls from Anthropology. Anthropology is such a great place for accent knobs if you just need two or three. They're not super pricey if you need like a low amount. And I just thought changing up the hexagon knobs with these knobs, again, added some visual interest to the kitchen. In. So it kind of draws your eye down and also up all at the same time. Another really simple change that I made was actually replacing my stove top burners. So we have an electric stove and I actually didn't know about this until I started looking into it a little bit, but you can just easily replace these stove top um, burners for like $16. I got mine from Amazon, came in a set of four. The way you can tell if the burners are gonna fit on your stove is to look for the barcode. Usually it's in your warming drawer at the bottom of your stove. There's little barcodes. You can just search that barcode and then search like stovetop burner or whatever accessory you're looking for for your stove. Um, a really easy way to find the parts for your stove that you're looking for. What a game changer. We had this weird
weird like tinfoil thing going on. It was dirty, not cute. These just instantly make the stove look almost brand new. Now, my favorite part, I get to style this kitchen and bring a little bit of organization to it. So the first thing I'm doing is actually decanting all of my dried goods. I had them in mason jars before, um, but the mason jars had like different labels on them. They weren't super cohesive. So I got these simple glass jars from Ikea. They're like $3 each. I'm lining them up on the shelves um, on this wall over here. And I just think that the colors look so beautiful. It looks like a little open pantry. And I've just kept all of the dried goods that we use pretty regularly up here. I love how this looks super decorative, but it's also super functional because these are things we use all the time. I think this is a really good organization tip because I feel like in rental apartments or small kitchens, there's not a lot of cupboard space. And usually a lot of packaging like takes all of that cupboard space up. So just taking them out and actually adding them as like a piece of decor in your kitchen makes such a huge difference. Up at the top here, I am just using these open cabinets to prop some books some of my bowls that I don't use often, just like that stuff that I don't use all the time because these shelves are really high up. And then even higher than that, I've put this beautiful Monstera plant. I just love how this completes the corner. Our kitchen ceilings are so high, so I really wanted to draw the eye up. And now, as always, for the finishing touches. So for my utensils, I love to use like a decorative jug. You could get a decorative vase, just something that looks really pretty to house all of those things that you need to use. Next to that, I put a jar of cereal. I've left it out on the counter in easy reach, labeled it with a cute heart chalkboard label. And then beside that, I've put a little milk jug with some fresh flowers in it. Again, I think it's just so fun to find those pieces that like belong in a kitchen, but use them in a different way, such as a milk jug becoming a vase. I've also put this really fun print of me holding a donut against the backsplash. Art in a kitchen is so great. I mean, obviously you need to put it somewhere where there's not gonna be food and you know, not in a high traffic area of your countertop. And then I'm putting a couple of soap dispensers. You guys know I love using Amber Apothecary bottles to put my dish soap in or your hand soap. And then I just put a little decorative spotty one. This used to be in my bathroom. I switched it up. And beside that, I've talked about this scrubber before. It's made of bamboo. It's really environmentally friendly. I've linked it down below. It's in my Amazon shop. And I've just placed it in this cute little decorative mini bowl. I think it looks so pretty. Again, it's taking all those things that you use every day that just don't normally look that great and just elevating them a bit and making them feel really special and really nice. To complete my little sink cleaning, you know, area. I'm using my favorite Swedish dishcloths. Again, I've linked these down below. They come in the most amazing, fun patterns. These are compostable when you're done using them, but you can wash them up to 200 times. I've washed mine so many times. I was buying like the blue cloths for the longest time and they would smell and just get really gross and I'd have to throw them out. But these, when you're done with them, after 200 washes, you can put in the compost and they will biodegrade, which is amazing. As my final finishing touch, I'm adding a rug by the sink. I got this one from Target a while ago. You know, easy, simple change to your rental kitchen that you can make is just to put a decorative rug by the sink. It feels nice on your feet when you're doing dishes and it just looks so pretty. And I say, the more fun, the better, which is why I went for a pom-pom one can never go wrong. I actually think this is supposed to be a doormat, but it actually totally works in this space as well. Guys, I'm so excited with how this kitchen turned out. It makes me feel so happy whenever I walk into this room. You don't need to take every single tip from this video, but I hope if you are embarking on your own mini kitchen renovation that you take some of these tips and I hope that they inspire you to just have like a more fun and functional kitchen.
Thank you guys so much for subscribing and commenting. Let me know down below what your favorite part of this makeover was and what part of your kitchen needs a major overhaul. Let me know in the comments. I'll try to reply to as many comments as I can, give you guys advice, and I will see you next Friday. Bye. Just wanted to take a brief moment to let you guys know that Marty is doing, how are you doing, bud? He's doing much better than he was. Thank you guys so much for all the well wishes on Instagram. And he has to wear this little cast for like a month, but he's good. Still my handsome man, right?